So let's talk about creatine, specifically creatine for women, because most of us are women. Yes, I do have a male client. I have had more male clients in the past. I've had a handful. Um, usually I at least have one, if not a couple, but I would say the majority of my clients are women. The majority of the people I speak to are women. So I wanna talk a little bit about creatine, in particular for women, um, which it's not really that much different, but it does matter um, because of the myth surrounding creatine that it's mainly for men. Uh, so what is creatine and how does it work? So creatine is actually a naturally occurring uh, compound found in anything that has protein. So it's found in meat, it's found in fish, it's found in dairy products. Um, so you already have creatine in your body. And essentially what creatine is, it's stored in your muscles and it's utilized for quick bursts of energy. So like if you're sprinting or if you're lifting weights. Um, and essentially it increases, so supplementing with creatine increases your muscle stores of phosphocreatine, which helps produce more ATP. Um, I won't go too much into what ATP is, but essentially it's the energy currency of your cells. Um, so it's basically what allows you to perform better during high intensity activities or any activities really. Um, your body is constantly depleting and replenishing ATP, but when we're doing quick burst things like sprinting or lifting weights, our ATP tends to get used much quicker, right? Um, and so having nice full creatine stores in your muscles will help regenerate ATP faster Meaning that, so what does this actually mean? It means that you will have this edge uh, in your ability to perform like higher intensity things, a, a little bit higher of an edge than you might have before. So for example, if you typically were able to do, I'm gonna use pull-ups as an example because they are such like a high intensity uh, uh, burst of energy, right? When we're, when we're trying to achieve that chin up, even if you don't get it, hanging there and pulling yourself is a lot of energy. So whereas you might've been able to complete three chin-ups in the past, if you have nice full fat creatine stores, you might be able to perform a fourth. And it's still gonna be a struggle and it's still gonna be very hard. And normally people don't actually notice, that's why I use pull-ups as an example or chin-ups, don't necessarily notice creatine supplementation's benefits until they're working really close to your max. Because if you're not actually working close to your max, then creatine's not gonna have that much of a difference because you actually have more wiggle room anyway. But it's if you are really close to your max in terms of intensity, in terms of lifting, et cetera, then having nice full creatine stores can help give you that little bit of an edge. And obviously, if you're doing one more rep or five more pounds or two more reps or 30 more seconds than you were before, it seems small, but those tiny little incremental um, improvements are what lead to more muscle, they lead to more strength, they lead to higher metabolic rate like over time. Okay, um, there was a study, and this isn't about creatine, but there was a study about women uh, like eating or not eating before training, so training like fasted. And again, this isn't about creatine, but it's an interesting um, numbers game. It was essentially, they studied women who trained fasted and women who trained with just a little bit in their system. So I think it was like, 15 grams of protein and 30 grams of carbs. So you could get that very easily in like a like a little like shake, you know what I mean? So something small. And the difference between what the women were able to do in terms of their weight and their intensity, there was like a two to 5% difference in the loads that they were able to lift, fasted or not fasted. Can't really remember if they studied the same group of women fasted and then, and then unfasted. I think they actually did. That would make the most sense. Um, and there was like a two to 5% difference in the load that they were able to lift. So like somebody who's training fasted might say, I feel fine, I feel great. Like, why would I eat? I'm lifting heavy, everything's great. But they actually have the ability to do two to 5% more and maybe just having food in their system would get them there. And that two to 5% seems very small, but that leads to greater strength gains, greater muscle gains, greater performance, greater metabolic rate, all these like tiny little things they add up. And it's similar with creatine. I can't give you percentage numbers, but it's essentially like has that little edge. Um, obviously also having the full creatine scores is gonna potentially help with faster recovery in between sets and in between workouts. Um, and you might, like I said, have a slight increase in muscle mass due to better training performance overall and possibly also like water retention in the muscles helping with that as well. Um, however, a lot of people think like I'll see people in forums and stuff be like, Oh, I started creatine and like, 
I'm not feeling any energy. <laughs> it's not a stimulant. A, a creatine is not work like a stimulant and you have no immediate like boost in energy or anything like that. Um, the effects are actually much more gradual. Uh, it's almost like a multivitamin <laughs> in terms of like, we already get vitamins in our food, right? And taking a multivitamin is just making sure that we are filling in all of the gaps that we might be missing. And you don't necessarily notice that you feel better when you're taking a multivitamin because the effects might be so minimal, if at all. Creatine is similar. It's almost like a multivitamin, um, a little bit, little bit more noticeable than that. But the results essentially accumulate over weeks with consistent use. Um, usually what I have found in working with people that people don't necessarily even notice that the creatine had any effect until they cycle off of it. So they'll be taking creatine for a while and are like, I don't really notice anything. And I'm like, you're not really supposed to. But then they stop taking it for whatever reason, maybe vacation, maybe they start forgetting, whatever. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, hold, hold, why am I not able to do this last rep of the deadlift? I was able to, oh, the, you know, there it is. Then you start to realize that. Um, something to know, however, about creatine in terms of strength and uh, ATP replenishment and all of that stuff is that 20, about 25% of people are creatine non-responders. Don't really know why, just one of those things. I mean, you know, some people are caffeine non-responders. They metabolize it so quickly that it doesn't affect them. Other people metabolize caffeine much slower, so they get real jittery and they can't have much caffeine. It's very similar with creatine. Just some people are creatine non-responders. Um, and so in this case, people might be taking creatine, but literally not notice anything when they sickle on or off. And it might be that they're a non-responder, okay? Um, some myths about creatine. And then I'll go into um, some other potential benefits of creatine, talk about creatine for aging populations, and then we can get to some questions. Um, so some common myths about creatine. One is obviously that creatine is for men. Um, a lot of people, uh, women in particular, tend to think that creatine is gonna bulk them up. Creatine does not bulk you up. Um, creatine is beneficial for both men and women, and it works the same way in both men and women. And women do now, thank God, want to get stronger and want to like build some muscle. But I promise you, like creatine is not going to automatically make you look like She-Hulk. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. However, another myth is that it causes like bloating and like a puffy water retention look, and that's actually not accurate. Um, it does cause water retention, but it's intracellular. So it causes water retention in your muscle, not outside of your muscle or under the skin, which actually makes you look puffy or whatever. Um, it, it doesn't do that. It's all intracellular. And there's studies that support this. There are studies that literally looked at where the water retention happens when people supplement with creatine and it is all intracellular. And what that can do actually is make your muscles look a little bit more full, but it does not cause overall um, like like uh, bloating or, or, well, I'll talk about bloating in a second. It doesn't cause inflammation and water retention outside of the muscle. Yes, you might notice an increase on the scale when you start taking creatine. Some people don't at all. Some people notice no increase on the scale, which is fine, but a lot of people will delay starting it because they're so scared of gaining weight on the scale. And I always say like, okay, we put way too much reliance on scale weight. It's literally a measure of gravity. You could take creatine and gain pounds on the scale, or you can literally stand on the scale with your water bottle and have the same effect because that's essentially what's happening. You're not gaining fat. You literally just have more water in you because the creatine is causing your muscles to hold on to more water. Okay. Intracellular water retention is what's happening. Um, and it balances out. So you might gain a pound, two pounds, maybe up to three, but it's gonna balance out and you're not gonna continue to gain weight. It's not something that just automatically starts to cause somebody to gain weight and never stop. You gain a couple of pounds from intracellular water retention and then it stops. And all of that water in your muscles and the creatine stores are gonna help you with your performance in the gym, which is going to boost your metabolic rate, which if you are somebody that is trying to lose weight on the scale or trying to lose body fat is going to benefit that process. So please, please, please don't steer away from creatine because you're so scared of gaining weight. If you gain weight at all, it is going to be intracellular water weight that is going to help in your training sessions. So, and also take a peek at your relationship with body weight and the scale because that might be something we want to um, examine because if you're that scared of it that you won't take something you know would be good for you because of that, um, that's concerning and we might want to step away from the scale a little bit, right? 
Awesome. Um, but in terms of bloating, there have been people that have reported feeling like when they start taking creatine, they're, they're, they're very uncomfortable in their gut and they feel bloated. And then when they cycle off of it, they don't anymore. I will get more information on this for you. This has not happened to me. This doesn't happen to most clients, but I have heard of it happening to some people. And I heard something recently by somebody I really respect in the industry who was talking about the reason this might happen is because of the way that creatine is processed. Um, and so a lot of uh, manufacturers, the way that they wash it, I think, um, could have a, a gut reaction. So it's not the creatine itself, it's more the processing of it. And there's a specific brand, and I'm sure that there's, I'm sure this person maybe even like, I don't know, maybe they have a, like a code for this brand or something. So I'll do my research before I give it, give you the name of it. But if you get a pure like water washed or water cleaned creatine, um, that the way that they process it is different. And I think she gets it over in Europe. Um, it takes away that completely. So it's really only for people who respond to that, which I don't. So if you don't feel any bloating or discomfort when you take creatine, then I would not worry about it at all. It's a more of an individual response. But if you do, um, I can give you the name of this company or maybe some others that process it in the same way um, that should theoretically take that effect away. Because like I said, it's not creatine in itself. Creatine is a naturally occurring substance. And if it was creatine itself that caused bloating, then we would be feeling that bloating every time we ate food with creatine in it, right? Um, another myth is that creatine can damage your kidneys. This is another common myth like with protein. Um, there's no evidence to suggest or support that creatine is harmful to kidneys uh, and healthy individuals when taken at like the right recommended doses, which by the way is three to five grams for women. Another myth is that you need to, two, two myths tied in one. One is that you need to front load your creatine when you start taking it. So instead of taking three to five doses, uh, three to five grams every day, you take like for a week, you take uh, 10 grams to fully saturate your muscles and then you come back down. So it's called a loading phase. Um, and then a, a myth tied in with that is that you need to cycle off creatine regularly. You don't need to cycle off creatine. There's no evidence to support that. And in terms of a loading phase, yes, it, it's partially true in that your muscles do take time to fully saturate with creatine, like their creatine stores. Uh, so if you just start on day one, taking three to five grams per day, then it will probably take a good three, four, five weeks for your muscles to fully saturate. But because the effects of creatine are so gradual and small anyway, like it's to me, like just start on day one, taking three to five grams and it's fine. Um, but some people like to front load and take like a full week of 10, 10 grams of creatine in order to fully saturate their muscles quicker so that in a week or maybe less, your muscles can be fully saturated with creatine and you can get right to all those great benefits that you might not even really notice right away anyway, okay? So those are some myths about creatine. Um, so even though creatine and non-responders is a thing, creatine is still actually really good for our brain health as well. So creatine is one of those supplements that I just kind of broadly recommend across the board for almost everybody. Um, it, it, it has been shown to help boost brain energy as well. So creatine increases ATP availability, not just in our muscles and in our body, but like in our brain, which may support better cognitive function, right? Um, it can also help with mental fatigue. So there's some studies that suggest that creatine supplementation can um, like reduce mental fatigue and increase focus, especially like in people who are sleep deprived. Uh, it might have possible mood benefits, um, it might support like mood regulation. People, there's some interesting studies on individuals with depression and the support of, of, of cognition and mental mood stability there. Um, for aging populations, we're seeing a lot of new studies coming out that of how beneficial creatine is for aging populations. Obviously, the, the, the clear links are helping to maintain muscle mass, supporting strength and supporting mobility and all that stuff that we tend to lose as we get older. So creatine is obviously gonna be helpful in supporting that, but also in the cognitive benefits, obviously, for aging populations. So there's growing research that really suggests that creatine might help like protect against um, cognitive decline and memory and other like brain health benefits in aging adults. Um, yeah, so creatine again is one of those things I kind of just recommend across the board. One of the huge benefits of creatine as well is that it truly is like my prediction is that in the next few years, we're gonna see creatine 
almost like added to a multivitamin or added as one of the, you know, people take, oh, I take my vitamin, I take my multivitamin, I take my omega-3, I take my D3, like all the things we know, creatine is going to be thrown in there. It's not going to be, it's not going to be something in the future that is associated purely in like the fitness realm. I believe it's going to, I think it's already kind of shifting and it's going to be something that's more just like your standard everyday person supplement, um, which is one of the reasons I recommend it. Another reason I, I really recommend it other than everything I've already said is because it is one of the most well-researched and like cleanest supplements out there it's not a creatine it's just creatine it's it's in an, it's in its most natural form it's not a mixture of a bunch of other stuff you can find it that way so you might go to a health store um, like a vitamin shop or something and you'll find mixes that have like oh it's BCAAs and creatine or whatever you don't need all that you can just get the pure creatine in its purest form um, and just and just supplement with it um, in terms of dose, like I said, for women, it's three to five grams. If you're a slightly larger woman, maybe five grams. If you're a slightly smaller woman, maybe closer to three grams. If you're taking three grams and you really notice absolutely nothing and you wanna try increasing to four or five grams, by all means, do it. Um, and you're not gonna, it's, it's not gonna be negative. You can take anywhere of three to five grams and just experiment with it. There's lots of ways to take it. So you can get the, just the powder and put three to five grams in anything you're drinking. It has a little bit of a chalky taste. I hate the way it tastes just in water. It's it's almost like, I'd almost rather it tastes worse than it does. It's that middle ground where like, like Dayquil, I hate drinking Dayquil, but at least I really know I'm gonna go take a shot and it's gonna be over. Whereas like creatine, it's like, I don't know. It's just, I, I almost, I would almost wish it was worse or nothing, like not this in the middle thing, because of the texture and it's like very chalky and it's powdery form. But when I mix it in with like an electrolyte drink or when I mix it in with a smoothie, I've even dumped it in my oatmeal. Creatine is heat stable, so you can mix it in anything and eat it that way. Um, it's very easy. The, the issue comes down to consistency because with a powder, it's a little harder to be consistent. And with creatine, that's really something, missing a day or two is not a big deal, but you need that consistency because it's not something that just reacts when you take it. It's not, a, you know, you take it before your workout to be stronger, it doesn't work that way. You really need to be consistent with it every single day, even on non-training days in order to have the, the, those gradual building benefits. Um, and so taking it consistently is the most important thing. So if there's something you do, so I like to do creatine with habit stacking, is there something you already do every single day consistently, like brush your teeth, um, and then you have your morning coffee. Maybe, I know some people here throw creatine in their morning coffee. That to me sounds a little rough. Uh, I don't believe you when you say it tastes fine. <laughs> I feel like I need to try it, but doing it at, at the same time every day and uh, in conjunction with a habit that you already have, is probably the best thing that you can do. Um, there's also creatine pills. So there's, you know, like Dayquil. I don't like to chug Dayquil, I'd rather have the pill. You can do that with creatine um, supplement pills as well, which is easier. They're usually a little bit more expensive and there's even creatine gummies. So you can get creatine gummies and take those as well. Again, probably gonna pay a little bit more. It's up to you. And in terms of an optimal time to take creatine, yes, there is an optimal time, but again, <clears throat> Consistency matters more. The most optimal time to take creatine is directly after your training session because your muscles are already kind of broken down. They're kind of inflamed. They've been a little bit abused and they're in a position to really absorb everything that you get it, give to it. So having creatine at this time has shown to have an edge, a beneficial edge. However, like I said, taking it consistently is way more important. So that would be my recommendation. So I would much rather you take creatine every day of the week in the morning, then take it three days a week after your workouts because you're gonna get better results if you're taking it consistently. My favorite way to take creatine currently is I have like an intra-workout drink that I sip on and I just throw it in there. So that's consistency for me. I'm working out six days a week, so I do end up missing that seventh day. So I'm rethinking when I'm gonna take it, but I will figure that out, don't you worry. Um, so that's everything about creatine. What questions? do you guys have <clears throat> about creatine? How would you need, how long would you need to take it to know if you're a non-responder? Honestly, I, I don't, I don't even know. Like it, it's, it's, it, so part of it is that people are not, there's some people that are non-responders. There's also some people that are more in tune with their bodies and less in tune with my body. Like I'm literally somebody who's not as in tune with my body as some other people out there. I could, I don't honestly know. Sometimes 
when I stop taking creatine and I notice strength decreases, I'm like, oh, it's the creatine. But then other times I'm like, oh, maybe it's my hormonal cycle or oh, maybe like sometimes I think I give creatine credit when maybe it wasn't creatine in the first place. Like I'm disconnected enough with my body that I'm actually not sure. I could be a creatine non-responder. I take it anyway. Other people are super in tune with their bodies. They know like every tiny little thing and could be able to determine if they're a non-responder. So it's, it's gonna be extremely individual, but I would say at least a month or more because it, if you start off taking that three to five grams from the beginning and don't do any preloading phase, then it's gonna take a good three to five weeks to saturate your muscles with creatine anyway. And then you need to obviously be pushing towards your max on a lot of the exercises. Um, and so there's a, there's a couple things in place that you have to be able to be doing those things, having creatine stores, nice full creatine stores in place for a longer period of time. And then also be working to your max for a relatively good period of time to then be able to cycle off and tell if there, if there was a difference, right? So I would say at least a month at the very bare minimum, um, but likely two, three, maybe up to six months, um, and then cycle off of it and really test it out. So there's other people also who are really good about testing things with their bodies too. Like we have some people here are really good following the data. So like, okay, I'm gonna go on creatine and I'm gonna, for three to six months, and I'm gonna track every little bit of data. And then, um, you know, on you know day whatever, I'm gonna stop taking creatine completely and then I'm gonna, do the exact same things and I'm gonna relook at the data. So if you're somebody that can do that, then you'll probably be able to notice it more than somebody like me who, I'm not really staring at that data all of the time. Uh, some part of me thinks I would like to, but I just am not consistent with it, so. Awesome, so that's creatine. I hope that was helpful. I feel like I covered all the important things about creatine in one thing. You know where to find me if you have any questions in the meantime.